I'm Ronnie James Dio. I've been in a few bands that you probably heard of before, Rainbow being one of them, Black Sabbath being the one before right. that, and now a band called Dio, which is my own band. Well, the kind of music that we make is called hard rock music. Uh, for those who don't know, it's very aggressive music. It's very loud, uh, but it's uh, the kind of music that I think people can relate to because if they're angry about something, they can go and listen to the music and not throw stones at windows. Uh, in our videos, we use very many special effects. We use a lot of makeup on the characters that were in the video because the kind of music we make is much more like fantasy than real life. So for us to make a video, it's really like living in another world. Uh, if we have a song, for example, as the video that you will be seeing, called The Last In Line, it centers first around the idea that I've written within the lyrics. Uh, the song is about uh, a search for some kind of truth about yourself. And in this video, we use very many special effects. Um, what our concept was, was to put you in what hell would be like for perhaps a very young person. Uh, in our video you see people uh, tied to video games. Um, they have the guitar plugged into their ears. So everything is uh, very, very strange. But the video concept starts with a song first, and then we, we get a storyboard uh, and take the story and try to make it come alive, and try to make the song come alive, not only with your ears, but with what you see, much like a film. Yeah, what, what does the church, for instance, in the States think about you? Well, they think that, uh, that I'm the devil or that I'm uh, about to be the, uh, the devil's man or that, uh, that this particular sign means uh, putting a curse on you. Um, they just think I'm a very, very bad, evil person. Our first album cover was not exactly um, the Madonna with child. Do, sorry, let me do that to you. <laughs> uh, wasn't the Madonna with child. Uh, it was a priest who appeared to be being drowned by a devil, and so everyone said immediately, "Oh my Lord, this is uh, this is the devil. This man, he's preaching that the devil should be killing good." Well, it's not true because, again, I've tried to make a point. The point is that you don't know what is inside the dressing. You know, I mean, you, you must take a look. You forget what's outside of it. Think of what's inside of it. A priest drowning could be the most evil thing in the world, and perhaps this poor animal up there is just an animal who happened to wander around the scene and he didn't really do anything to him, or he may be the, the good. Uh, that really was the whole point, but it was jumped upon by the, I won't say do-gooders, because that's good. I'm glad someone's trying to do good. That's, that's terrific. But they should find out what's inside of my package you know, before they decide to uh, throw stones at it. And what does that sign mean with two fingers? Oh, it, it, I just cursed you, and you're going to die in hell. Welcome to Ronnie James Dio. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to the Monsters Rock Show. Now, Dio have been together since 82. Yes. But, I mean, how and why did you choose the, the three other guys as Jimmy, Vivian, Vinny? Oh, very easy reasons for two of them. One, mm -hmm. uh, or two of them I had worked with before. Of course, yeah. Uh, yeah one was sure. Jimmy Benny and the other was Vinny Avesey in Rainbow the bands of Rainbow Sabbath. and Sabbath, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was looking for that, uh, that magical ingredient, which was, of course, these days, the guitar hero. Mm -hmm. uh, the one who, was, who had the capability of playing brilliantly, uh, to uh, meet my expectations from the, great pl the players I had played with before, yeah. Richard Blackmore, Tony Iommi, a few others here, right, and there, of right. course. And uh, the missing ingredient was Vivian Campbell. And we f came over here and found him uh, through Jimmy. Jimmy had seen him play in a band called Sweet Savage in Ireland, um, right. was from Belfast. And uh, he came down for an audition with us, never thinking that he was going to get it. So he was full of confidence. And then when we told him that he had it, he suddenly turned to jelly. And was the end of it. <laughs> But uh, that was the, the other ingredient that we needed. We found Viv. So now we've become a family and a band. Yeah, that's good. Now, uh, your third album, you've just been recording that, yes. Sacred Heart. Mm -hmm. How's that going? When are we going to... Well, it's finished. Uh, yeah. It'll be released uh, sometime in the middle, early part of August. I think it's the 12th or 13th, something like that. Uh, How do you it's, feel about I'm it? Very, very pleased. You produced uh, it, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't be happy two. with it. I think it shows great progression in the band, the yeah. confidence that uh, the players have now within what we've created. Yeah. And the reaction from the, the people we play for has been fantastic, too. Yeah. So we feel real confident about it. Are the lyrics mysterical? Or mis yes, yeah. yes, Are yes. They? Yeah, that's my claim to fame, I guess, being Mr. Mystery, yeah. Mr. Fantasy. I do that because uh, I think that we've got enough awfulness in the world. Yeah. Every time you pick up a newspaper, it's someone's being murdered or yeah. uh, dragged behind a bush somewhere. And I think it's about time we use our imagination and, and live some of our dreams instead. Even if it's just for a little while of 
you know, escapism. Look forward to hearing that. that. Yeah. Let's have a look at your video now. This is Dio coming up. This is Mystery. Dio and Mystery, and I'm talking to Ronnie James Dio. Um, Ronnie, do you write the you know, band? Do you write individually, or do you write as a team? Do you, I mean, you've got no set routine, like one writes the lyrics, one writes the I story. write all the lyrics. You write, I write all, all the lyrics. Melodies. Yeah. I see, mm -hmm. yeah. And we write the others in, in varying forms. Yeah. Talking of writing, you wrote um, that single, Hungry of Heaven, for mm -hmm. the, um, as, as a soundtrack for the That's film right. Vision Quest. Why yeah. didn't you release that as a single? It was released as a single in Europe. It was not released, has not yet been released as a single here. In fact, I don't even know if the film has been released here. Do you know if it hasn't been? I haven't, no, I Quest? haven't seen it here, no. no I've not either. I'm, I assume that it hasn't yeah. been released here. Uh, we wanted the first single from Sacred Heart to mm. be not quite so poppy. Uh, I'm not really all that taken by those kind of songs. No. Uh, we didn't want people to think that that was going to be a reflection of the rest of the I album. See, yeah. So therefore, the, our choice was a song called Rock and Roll Children, yeah. which is a little bit more true to the concept of the entire album. I'm very pleased to welcome to the studio today Mr. Ronnie James Dio and Mr. Jimmy Bain. Hi there. How's hey, it going, hey, chaps? Great. Thanks. All right, now this is your first time really coming over the, this side of the Atlantic to do a British and European tour in, I think, about 18 months. I want to ask you about that in a moment, but first of all, I feel it's my duty to ask you what's happened to your guitarist, Vivian Campbell. I hear he's no longer with the band. You don't want to talk about that. <laughs> You're gonna pry, aren't you? Again? <laughs> well, it's uh, you know it's the same that happens with a, with marriages. You get divorced, don't you? I think musically his tastes were running, uh, you know, flowing down a different river than ours were, and so it, it came time to uh, you know end the marriage and carry on with something else. So who have you got in the band now, Jimmy? Uh, the guitar player is called Craig Goldie. He was previously with um, a band called Gefria. Now, I mentioned the tour just now. It's the first time you've come over to Britain and Europe in, as I say, 18 months. Certainly the first time since Sacred Heart was released. Mm -hmm. I hear this time you've actually brought the full US stage show with you. I mean, the Dragon, the Drawbridge. You tell me about it. Well, we, uh, we always bring a stage set with us. We always bring something uh, larger than life. I think that it's very important, especially with the uh, economic conditions in all of the world, and Britain is certainly no exception, that you bring something that gives them value for their money. They do have to spend a lot for a ticket, and we want them to leave a D.O. show saying, wow, boy, you know what you missed for those who didn't see it. So we did bring uh, all of the things that are inherent in the American show, the dragon, the pyro, the lasers, the crystal ball, the knights, the swords, the whips. Uh, that it sounds a bit masochistic, <laughs> there, doesn't it? All of the things. All right, well, look, I'll tell you what, we've got a, we've got a video now and, uh, of Dio with their American stage show, and this is called Hungry for Heaven. Hungry for Heaven and Dio, Ronnie James and Jimmy Bain. Now, yesterday in London, uh, I attended a reception for the Hearing Aid event. Now, I'm not going to explain to the people out there what Hearing Aid is. I want you guys to tell me all about it. Great. <laughs> okay, who'd like to go first? James? Yeah, Hearing Aid is basically the heavy metal contingent of the music businesses. Um, attempt to uh, raise money for world hunger through uh, a, a single predominantly first and then feasibly afterwards we're going to release an album too. This is a la Live Aid, right? Same sort of idea but strictly kind of heavy metal people involved in it. Iron Who? Maiden, Judas Priest, uh, that kind of thing. I was going to say, I mean, how many bands <coughs> have you actually got represented on this? Well, we, we did it in a, in a kind of a different way. We have uh, a lot of people represented within the chorus itself, but there was not enough time within the track to use all of the people that were in the chorus, so over 50 people there. So we used, uh, I think we had 11 guitarists and we had uh, eight vocalists, uh, just within the single itself. Uh, and all of the bands involved, there, there must have been you know, 20 or 30 different organizations represented. For the time being, we're talking about a single, right? That's right. Called yeah. Stars. Mm -hmm. Who actually wrote that track? Well, the Jimmy and I and Vivian. Yeah, the three, the three of us together, like, it's great. And so all the proceeds from that record actually go to helping feed people in Ethiopia? Yes, what we've tried to do is, uh, there seems to be a lot of consternation about the fact that everything gets, supposedly gets funneled to Ethiopia or one particular area. We wanted it to be different than that. I mean, there, there's famine all over this world. Right. And it will continue to be, and that really is the point of all this. Uh, the money really isn't that that important. Uh, I think Bob Geldof will tell you that too. It's the awareness that you as a human being should do something for another human being. Well, here it is then, the 12 inch star single, part of what the last year's work's been about on here tonight. Roddy, how difficult has the whole project been to get together? Well, not difficult from the standpoint of doing it as a producer, as a, as a musician. Uh, 
that's what we do, so that should not be difficult. The difficulties were in uh, blackmailing, hammering, beating people over the head, uh, doing all those things to get them to contribute for the LP. Uh, it was not really so much of a problem getting them to uh, be single artists on the single itself. The hard part was what Jimmy and Vivian had to go through. Without important people, there's no, it just wouldn't sell. And, and the point is to make a lot of money to feed a lot of hungry people. So should, you should ask Jimmy how difficult it was, I guess, because that's right, the part he was seems in. a good question. Jimmy, did you find a lot of people turn up on the day to record the Star single and tend to forget about the whole project when you came to ask for album tracks? Yes. On the whole, <laughs> yes, except for us and, and a couple of bands that were very, um, very into the project uh, and, and wrote songs especially for the album and stuff like that. That's great. Um, Fortunately for them, they didn't have the same pressure of work as we had, so we had to fit what we had to contribute in a sort of fine time schedule. You were actually um, recording your third album, weren't you, when this was coming right. together? That, that, that was all done when we were in, in the writing stage, and we were writing the songs for the album and recording. Um, yeah, some people did sort of go a little off it after a while. Oh, it's uh, yeah, they did go a little off it. But we had to, like Ronnie says, bang a few heads and uh, shake them up a little bit and say, you know, well, you did say you were going to give it to us, so you might have been drunk, but uh, we want it now, you know, we're, we're calling our markers in. You know? um, it was yourself and, and, D and Vivian Campbell, who used to be in Dio, who were involved in Hero Night right at the beginning, and you wrote the music for Stars. Yeah. At what point did you then approach Ronnie to produce it and write the lyrics and become a front person, I guess? Uh, well, I I booked some studio time or got some studio time today, and I thought, well, if we're going to get a harmony, we should, you know, go for it and start putting deadlines against ourselves. And so I just went in rehearsal one day and asked Ronnie and said, "You, you want to do this thing?" But I said, what no. was it? Your reaction was you didn't have enough time because well, you were producing the third deal. Well, there was another career to deal with. The career was uh, the career of this band. I'm, you know, producer and more or less controller of a lot of the things that happened within the, within this band, and I. I gave them my blessing and said, please go ahead and do it. You know, show your own your own expertise and show your own right, your own initiative. And uh, I think that what happened was that they needed someone who had a little bit more of a, a success reputation to rally around. And I'm not trying to diminish Vivian or Jimmy's part in, their, in success within music, but mine has been a lot longer and a lot more visible. And I think that it made it easier to have that rallying point, my rallying point. So once they got me involved, uh, I do it as I always do, arrest control from everyone, tell them how it's going to be. And how it's, but, you know, it was, it was a joint venture. I mean, credit has to go to Jimmy and Vivian. And I've never seen anything other than that. Today that I've never seen before, and the reason is they're into a bit of heavy metal. Make your favorite guy welcome. Ronnie James Dio. <laughs> welcome to Australia. Good on you. Thank you. It's two postponements earlier in the year. Why were they postponed? Well, normally, um, if you do Australia, you've, you've done Japan as well. If you do yeah. Japan, you do Australia. So we had cancelled yeah. twice in Japan uh -huh. with, with uh, promoter problems, and that also meant that we were, had to uh, cancel. It just make it too well, expensive yeah. to come all this way Absolutely. without that link mm -hmm. to step off. There was a poll recently run uh, around Australia to ask who people would most rather see in the heavy metal area working here in Australia. You won the poll. Oh, very nice. Would make you feel good. If I asked you, who are your top three heavy metal artists outside of your own band? Who would you name? Uh, ACDC. Yeah. 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 You know, that's, to me, that's always been really the, the ultimate, uh, and I don't mean this in a derogatory manner, the ultimate garage band to me. Right, the yeah. band, that, And by that, I mean a band that's really natural and just mm -hmm. picks up their instruments and plays, a band with incredible sense of feel. They also happen to be friends, too, which is nice for right. me to be able to say that. The next two? Uh, I think probably, uh, certainly by uh, uh, standards of success, I would have to say, and again, friendship, uh, Scorpions, probably. Right. And the next? And the next, Number well... three in the trifecta. Well, do these have to be uh, recent or not? Uh, recent? No, yeah, right. Well, I think even though I disagreed with their reformation, I think you'd still have to give Deep Purple a nod for, uh, for being a great band. And, well, of course, boys, Led Zeppelin, to me, has always been the ultimate I heavy know, metal band. All right, let's have a look at the uh, past track of yours. King of Rock and Roll, Ronnie James Dio.
Let's go. Okay. okay, here's the album that is selling very well at the moment, your current album. And just looking at the clip, looking at the album, very big stage show. What, what can we expect here in Australia? Well, unfortunately, we, we were unable, due to uh, uh, monetary matters, to, right. to bring it here. I mean, it's incredibly expensive to, that's to bring it anywhere. That's the dragon on the cover. Yes, it's, it's not only the dragon. He's not really such a problem. Uh, he travels well. Uh -huh. He gets a bit airsick sometimes, but he, he travels pretty well. <laughs> It's all the other things that go along with it. It's, uh, it's such a massive set. It's, uh, it's a gothic castle, really. So it's toned down a little for Australia it's, because of it's, the... uh, No, you're going to uh, get us playing music. You're so time. quiet. I mean, such a quiet guy, and then you, you put on the video, and there's this guy really belting. You have to save something for later, you know. I see. It's not that you're schizophrenic or anything. You have to we'll save come... it for the show, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, your career, I wanted to talk about, you sort of done work with a couple of bands like Rainbow, and then you've done your own thing. It's about been split about 50-50. Which one do you prefer? Do you like to have your own group or work in as part of another band? But it never really mattered to me. Uh, yes, I split my work. time up really between three, between this one, Rainbow, and Sabbath. Right. And Sabbath was one of the bands that I'd, I'd come to Australia with uh -huh. uh, on the third, the third trip here. Uh, it never mattered to me who was in the band. Of course, it matters who's in the band, but it never mattered whether it was a band that I was either the leader of or just a part of. I've always been part of a band. I think that's the most important thing about being in a band. A band signifies that you're with other people, and you should share it that way. Yeah. Uh, for me, I've just always taken uh, the people around me and, and worked with them and, and uh, for them and, it's a and team, just been happy. That's what you have to be. Yeah, I think if it's a team, then uh, they stay together for a sure. little longer. Crusader and Lightning Rock, uh, two groups in Sydney who raise this money, I'll present you with the check. Right. A considerable amount that they picked up the other night by doing it for here and aid. We talk about that now. How did you get that all together? I mean, all those big names in the heavy metal. Well, era. that wasn't very difficult. No. Uh, the most difficult part was uh, just taking the first step and doing it. Viv Campbell, and uh, who was in Dio before, and Jimmy Bain, our present bass player, uh, who came up with the idea and uh, asked if I would get involved. We then started making some calls. Luckily, uh, Having had such a history in this music, a lot of I kn we knew most of these people, and they yeah. were very happy to, to take part Just in it. Just the logistics of getting them all together. That was a difficult good. part. Yeah, yeah, that was very hard because uh, we may not get uh, the most uh, notoriety this kind of music through all kinds of media, but we certainly put more people into halls than anyone else does without that kind of publicity. Yeah. Uh, so it was difficult to take, uh, say, Rob Halford from Judas Priest, who was might have been in New York doing a show, and uh, Don Dawkins, who may have been in Phoenix, or our, ourselves, who may have been in, in Britain to get them all together at one time but they all said we want to do it so so badly that we'll forget about our projects and we'll just do this one and so it was it. really easy congratulations yeah. thank you for coming in my good pleasure. luck tonight thank you for at, this uh, entertainment Thanks. center and twelve dollars tickets have a few available if you want to go along and in melbourne next tuesday tell us about your new album sacred heart is it a natural progression from your earlier records well the al album sacred heart is the third in a series of dio albums um, and I think it's a very natural progression as to what we've done. We didn't go in with concepts in mind. We didn't try to make it more progressive. I think it's because the band knows itself so much better now. We're confident with each other. We're confident in the studio playing and, uh, and putting all the material together. I think it's just a very, very natural progression of things. So it's nothing we planned. It's very lucky that it came out that way. Your stage shows are always very elaborate productions. Are they more than just a concept to you? The most important thing about bringing a big stage set out to me is that we're giving value to the, to the kids who have to spend a lot of money for a ticket. They do have a lot of choices these days. You can go see Band A, Band B, Band X, Band Z, whichever you'd like to see. If you, I've always felt that if you bring them something that is going to be worth all of the money and the time that it takes them to collect that money, then they probably go, will go to your show first. That's not the underlying reason. The underlying reason is that I feel it's important that you present theater with music, I think it makes it come much more alive, and that goes hand in hand with the value for money. If you're presenting a circus on the road, I think everyone wants to go and see it and will come away enjoying it. That's the reason, really, for, for bringing it out. Your lyrics have always been filled with mythological and medieval references. Why is that? I like very much the values of that time. The values were that instead of the black knight leaping out from behind a tree and dragging the damsel behind a bush. Uh, the white knight was usually there to leap out from another tree and strike the black knight to the ground. It's just a matter of value. Chivalry was a, a fantastic idea. It's too bad that we've not been able to use a bit more of it or, or have it uh, be apparent in our society. Uh, I like to write around those themes because they take us out of the real world. I think we have enough 
problems to deal with every time we look at the television or read the newspaper. And if there's some way that I, through my lyrics and through the music that we write together, uh, can give you a little bit of escapism, then I think that's probably uh, a nice thing in this period of our, uh, of our socially disruptive time. Do you come up with all the concepts for staging? The concepts are uh, uh, done by Wendy and myself. Wendy is my manager, Wendy Dio. And uh, we come up with the concepts for the album covers first, and then we take them one step farther and make them into reality with, with what you will see at our show. Do you ever tire of touring? Well, I think I'd be a liar if I said I didn't tire of touring. Of course, everyone gets tired at some point, but it's the life that I like the best. Uh, it's a chance for me to become better at what I do, to hear the opinions of, of the people I'm playing for, to see whether I'm doing it right or not. Um, it's my, my craft, it's my job, it's my art, it's all of those things. And, but like everyone else who works at whatever job, you occasionally get bored with it. Uh, that's just human nature. I'd like to be lying on the beach today too. But uh, this is my work and this is what I love the most and care about the most, so I forsake the beach for being here and talking to you. Are you attracted to the vagabond life? Uh, would you consider not seeing the same place every day? Do you like to travel? I think so, I think so. I must be very nomadic. Uh, I like to see a different place every day, see a different face every day, hear a different idea every day. Uh, I think I like to travel because I get to meet the people that I, that I have to deal with, and I find out whether I have my finger on the pulse of this country or any other country, and whether I have my finger on the pulse of young ideas and young values. I think that being a vagabond sometimes keeps you very young, and I'd like to think that it's done that for me. I know it has inside of me. I'm not Re yet ready to bear my physical self and show you if there's any flab there, but uh, there's not much, so I think I'm all right. Tell me how Dio differs. Um, how Dio differs from previous bands you've been in. Well, I think that the most overriding factor is that we're very honest with each other, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not in any of the bands before that I could mention. Uh, whenever you delude yourself that you're more important than the whole or that the whole is more important than you. I mean, I know it's a reverse kind of situation, but whenever you delude yourself into thinking that, then it's all going to fall apart. So with honesty, it can only either stay together for a long period of time or mean a, a very amenable parting, which I think is very important too. I have been in some bands where some of those ex-members and I don't speak anymore at all, and I think that's a real shame. Uh, all, of, all of us in those days put a lot of ourselves uh, we wrenched a lot of ourselves out of our, our hearts and our souls, and to see it destroyed because of petty jealousies and because of dishonesty, I think was the worst thing that ever happened. Fortunately, we made good music during those times, but the friendships didn't last. And I think the other thing that makes us different is that we try to write with intelligence. I know I try to lyrically write with intelligence and imagination to allow the listener to create his own concept or her own concept of what the song is really about. It could be your song. It could be Fred's song. It could be Phil's song could be my song. It has a different meaning to each who listen to it. And I think for, again, all those reasons, the honesty and the fact that we try to do it with intelligence and we try to let everyone that we play for be part of this band. We consider the audience to be a sixth member of this band. They are that important to us. Uh, that's what makes us different than that, all the others, I think. Is there anything else you would like to say to the audience? Well, I think the same I've always said, uh, and that's thank you for caring about me as much as you do. And I know you do because you write to me and tell me that. And I read all of those things. If I don't reply to them personally and immediately, it's only because my schedule is such that I don't really have time for anything but, but my work. So I have people to deal, that, deal with it for me. And hopefully they've been taking care of it. But thank you for your concern and for your care and for the love that you've shown me. And I hope that I've returned that to you. And uh, my, the best way for me to show that, that I'm gonna return my love is we'll be back on the road playing in your town, every town, and giving our stage show and ourselves and our music. And uh, that's my way of saying thank you for being so wonderful to me. Thanks. It's very different from a lot of the metal that we hear. A lot of the metal that we hear, as you know, has a lot of satanic references to it. I mean, even in the videos, they're there. It's blatant. It's okay. I mean, sure. that's what they're into. Now, you don't seem to be into that in the same way. You're more, you're into the stories, but you seem to find the good rather than the bad in the end. Well, I've always said that, um, again, I'm not a crusader, and I'm not trying to teach anyone a lesson. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm 
I'm showing paths. I'm showing this road and that road and this road and that road. These are the roads you can take. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's to tell you that perhaps this is the wrong road for you to take. From my own experience, I think maybe you should go to the right instead of to the, instead of to the left. But it's your choice. It's your decision. I'm not uh, a dictator. I'm just a person like everyone else. And if I can give the benefit of my experience, and that's what it's all about. And stories are important. I'm a storyteller. Texas. Uh, well, like I said before, it feels real warm, but not as warm as it was on stage last time. But it's so, always great to be back here. The atmosphere gets better and better and better every year for the jam. And I think it's going to be no exception. you got some great, great bands uh, on the show this year with White Snake and Boston and Poison. I think bands that no one that were contracted before they became mega hits. Yeah. Uh, but it's great. you got a great young band in Tesla. Uh, you got Fahrenheit, another good young band. Uh, a lot of good you, uh, things happening. How did you of... yourself go into the jam this year? No, I'm not. I can't. I have to go back home with all the things that we're doing for the release of this album. I've got too many commitments, but I did get rid of some of those commitments just to fly in for this one, because these people mean an awful lot to me. Can you tell me a little bit about your new album? Well, there are nine tracks on it. It's called Dream Evil. Uh, Dream Evil uh, is one of the tracks on the album, uh, therefore the title track. Uh, it's got uh, a song that was played here called I Could Have Been a Dreamer, which I'm assuming is going to be a single of some kind, whatever that means. I have no idea what that means. It's a real different album. It sounds like a storybook. Every song is very different. Every song, as far as I'm concerned, has one of the best guitar solos I've ever heard in my life on it. The guy, Craig Goldie, just played magnificently well on it. Are you very well pleased with Goldie and his progress with your band, Dio? Oh, absolutely. I think he's just absolutely magnificent. He's, he's, he's going to make himself uh, a lot of legions of followers on this one because he played so well. When do you expect the release? 21st of July. I'll be 21st of July. Uh -huh. Are there any other titles that you can tell us about? There's one called Sunset Superman. That's all about people who, uh, I think you can look at it this way. Just picture all these people sitting at a desk with their suits on, suits and ties on. When 5 o'clock comes, they pick up their shirt, there's a big S. They go out and party. There's people who come alive after the nighttime. There's a song called All the Fools Sailed Away on it. Uh, one called When a Woman Cries. Uh, one called Night People, which I guess is probably about all the people I know, and a few others. How do you feel about your uh, touring audience and crowd Well, and they've following? always been uh, the most loyal people to me. Uh, I love them all. They're, they're just, you know, magnificent, wonderful people. Uh, they've always been the most loyal to me. They've, they allowed me to do what I do, which is my music. And what would your advice be to a young starting musician who wanted to get there? Work your butt off. Make sure you got some talent first. Don't work for nothing. If you got the talent, just believe in yourself. Live for that dream. And along the way, if the dream doesn't come through, something else nice will happen for you. It's, it's, it's practice, you know, practice and hard work. That's the only thing, the only way you make it. All right, this is David May with Ryan James Dio. And Thanks, Thanks a lot. Okay. Your new guitarist, Craig Goldie. And not only that, but I understand Craig co-wrote most of the new material with you for the new record. Yeah. The partnership seems, seems to be taking off very quickly. Well, it wasn't that difficult because I've known Craig since he was 17 when he was in the band Rough Cut, where some of us have taken some other good players. Uh, Ozzy got Jakey e. Lee from, from, that, from that band. Uh, we've gotten Craig now and Claude Schnell, our keyboard player, who's also from Rough Cut, and now Paul Shotino, who was a singer in that band, is now playing with Quiet Riot. So uh, it has been... Uh, a place where we've kind of run to to snatch people here and there. Uh, but that aside, um, having known him that long, it's been very easy for me to get along with him because I knew his attitude right away, and I knew that he was brought up with uh, Deep Purple and Rainbow, which were you know, something I'd had something to do with both of those people, so I knew he, he, he was coming from some good stock, I think. Right. I, I wanted to ask you, in fact, because a lot has already been made of Craig's quite detectable Richie Blackmore influence, if you like, the guitarist who partnered in Rainbow. Would it be fair to say, in some respects, you've retraced some of the best elements of your earlier work with Rainbow in order to progress with the new Dio album? Well, I don't know. I think that uh, the constant mention of Rainbow all the time, I think, first of all, points out that everyone liked that band an awful lot. So did I. It was, it was very unique and very special, and it's in a special time in music, I think, just as Sabbath was for me. Uh, it was, uh, I think, well, it, of course, to me, was always the first heavy metal band. And then again, I think it was the first band yet again to resurrect the attention to heavy metal. In 1978, the Heaven and Hell album, I think, in great part, did exactly that. So I, I'm very, very pleased to have taken part in both those situations. Uh, as far as Craig's interest in it, or a reflection of Rainbow uh, within this album, Dream Evil, I think all it is, if you listen to all the albums that I've been um, involved with from Rainbow onward, I think you'll find that uh, it was perhaps more my uniqueness that made all that happen. Uh, after all, I don't hear anyone saying that Purple sound like Rainbow. He was in that band too, wasn't he? Uh, or that Rainbow sound like Rainbow, and, I, and he was in that one as well. 
Uh, I think it's just a matter of uh, the character that you have uh, as, a, as a writer, as a performer. And I think my character has just stayed constant because I'm not one to let people tell me what to do normally. This is a rock show, of course. You were involved in launching the Hearing Aid Project. How successful was that project for you eventually? Uh, not as successful in money terms as I would have liked it to have been. But again, if it helped one person, it was successful. Now, since then, of course, you, you've been involved in a, one or two other charity projects. For instance, I know you did a commercial for American TV for the Rock Against Drugs organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, I think you, gave a, you were telling me earlier, you gave a performance recently for the Children of the Night organization. Yes, that's right. Um, well, let me explain both of those for you. Uh, Rock Against Drugs, I was approached with some other people, with um, Gene Simmons, who did one, Belinda Carlisle from uh, the Go-Go's, and now doing her own uh, thing. Uh, and a few other people, too, uh, who all felt as strongly as, as I do that uh, it's something that, that we, as somewhat idols of, of younger people, can, can help to change bad drug attitudes. And we wanted to, uh, to tell them our experiences, some who had experiences personally with drugs and some, like myself, luckily, who had none, only with people that I've seen fall by the wayside. And uh, we just cared, and we wanted to do it. We were able to do it in our own way. And all of ours were, again, very personal. Mine concerned uh, uh, my attitudes about people and about, about goals and dreams. And my attitude about that is, you know, don't let your dreams turn into nightmares, because that's what drugs will do to you. And seeing in the release of your new album is the fact that you're about to appear as special guests to Bon Jovi at the Castle Donington Festival. Are you looking forward to going out there to 50, 60,000 people on Saturday? Well, I always uh, look forward to playing for people. Uh, 50 or 60,000 really doesn't matter to me. Uh, 50 or, or 60,000, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're playing your music, you're doing the best you can. It's the situation that's a little bit more difficult. We've, we always bring a big production with us, and of course we're not able to. It's not our show, it's, it's a Bon Jovi show, so you, you take a back seat to that. But it gives us a chance to, I think, perhaps answer some of the questions that have always been leveled at us about the stage production. Do you find that it gets in the way? Why don't you just play the music? Well, here's your chance, you know, a chance to do that. I, of course, look forward just to playing. That's what I look forward to. This will be our second Donington. We did, the, we did one in 1983, uh, and we're considerably lower on the bill at that point. So I guess we're working our way up, and then perhaps in 10 years, maybe we'll get to headline it. Uh, although it's, that doesn't really matter to me. It's a great opportunity to play for people. We're in Europe doing 10 shows. We've, we've already played one in Helsinki. We did a festival that was our own, again, without production. And we'll carry on to do uh, uh, some shows in, in Italy, in uh, Spain, and the two Monsters of Rock shows in Germany. So it'll be a, a brief whirlwind tour for us, but a chance to play for a lot of people in a short time, and that's important to us. Following that, we'll be able to go back to America, build that stage set, make it saying, bigger and better. You'll have the, the new stage show. Do you have any idea yet what you're going to be using on stage? Well, we're, you know, very rapidly approaching the, two, the year 2000, and so I think that smacks of the fact that we have a lot of technology to deal with out there. So we want to deal with that. It'll be a lot more high tech than it's ever been before, um, but there'll be a smack of middle, middle medievalism. That's the word in there somewhere, and a few costumes and swords and witches and wizards here and there. I must ask, because the, the, the star of the last stage show was, of course, Denzel the 35-foot dragon. What's happened to Denzel? Did you finally see him off with your, your laser-eyed sword? Or? Well, we've put him... Yeah, he's, he's in a stud farm at the moment. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, all the other dragons are busy, all the female dragons busy chasing him, I'm sure. Uh, we've put him in, in, in storage as we have our, the, the three sets before it, the two sets before it, sorry, uh, in preparation for Dio Land, uh, which will be Disneyland instead of... Uh, it'll be deal in. No, I don't know what we'll do with them. Occasionally, we, uh, we take bits of our stage set and, and give them to organizations that are having uh, auctions for charity. Um, one of our nights from the last show that we did uh, is now resting proudly in front of a uh, fraternity at an, an American university yeah. on their front, front yard. And they paid quite a, quite a bit of money for it, and that's the whole purpose of it, you know. As far as the dragon goes, he's, he, again, he's just enjoying himself. And, We'll probably at some place in some time bring him back again and see him again. Yeah. Uh, could we have some comments from the TV audience? Thanks, my friend. Thanks, What was your motive in this Well, we've done quite a few benefits, uh, this band has. Uh, we feel that we have the time, uh, everyone should have the time to, to give of their talent and of their time to do anything for humanity, because uh, we are people dealing with people. If we stop thinking about people around us, then it's time for the human race to die. Uh, so you're all for this kind of movement? I'm sorry? You're all for this kind of movement, this kind of fundraising? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as he goes to the right place. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Bye-bye. Okay. Good shot. This is a beautiful house you have here, Ronnie. Uh, Thank you. How long have you lived here? I've been here now for about five years. Mm -hmm. um, the home is eight years old. It looks a bit older than that. I think the furnishings have something to do with it. The furnishings are quite a bit older. Uh, this particular piece right here, for example, is uh, from Windsor Castle. Really? This was made, uh, I think, 1495. So, again, it's... Uh, it shows you that the furnishings are all of the houses um, new. I'm always being accused of living in the past and being a medieval person, and I guess this kind of brings it all together. Uh, the pool table is rather interesting as well. Uh, this was a Christmas present from my wife, from Wendy. Uh, we can see the I lions know. and whatnot. This, this is a reproduction of a table that was uh, built in 18, I think it was 1865. I make shots that are unbelievable. I mean, I can do anything with this table, and that's how I got this place. I played pool all my life, and I was able to buy it. Well, you've caught me in the library, um, one of my favorite places in all the world because it contains words. And what's important to me are more of the things that, uh, that I live around. This chair, this is a Bible box here with a Bible on the top of it, a very old one. This is a place that I don't do any writing in. It's strictly a library. Most of my work is done in a dungeon. in the dining room, as you can see, the table at which I eat my most favorite meal in all the world, which is Indian food, curry from old Imperial Britain, I think that was. Uh, the table, as you can see, the sideboard, lovely carvings. I think the nicest thing about all this kind of fur furniture, and one of the reasons I love it so much, is because there was so much thought and care taking in doing it. These were when workmen really cared about the things that they made. Uh, it makes me feel that Perhaps we can get back to that era someday. I think I care enough about the music. I know how much these people cared about what they made. Maybe when you put the two together, it all spells deal. I don't know. <coughs> you know I don't play piano. I'm a singer. Let's go to the bar. It's my favorite place anyway. This looks like a well-used bar. I mean, obviously, you've had a lot of elbows resting on this at one time or another. Well, uh, uh, you know, I should perhaps mention some of the other people in the band as well. And, you know, when we talk about the bar, that, of course, brings to mind, you know... Our friend. My mate, my mate, Jimmy Bain, yeah. Now, Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's a, a, not only a, you know, a great friend and a great musician, but he's, he's a Scot as well. He's a good Scotsman. And he tested this bar for me before I bought it. He put the elbow here, leaned on it, and he said, I pronounce this bar fit to drink at. <laughs> And so, from that moment on, we've had a lot of parties here. As, as Ronnie said earlier, we're not big on big formal dinners or so on, but the bar is full of people most of the time. We never started with this. So why should we think that this should last forever? I was just as happy, and I'm sure Wendy was just as happy before struggling and being happy together. I think this is all very transitory anyway. It's, it comes and it goes. I mean, you, you have ups and downs. It's like life. Life goes through great waves of emotion and passion and... Uh, great lows of despair and whatnot. That's the way life is. Life is, ebbs and flows like the sea does. We've had a lot of very hard times over the years. I, I remember the time when Ronnie and Rainbow Party Company and we were living in Connecticut and uh, the manager didn't want to manage Ronnie anymore and he was, didn't have a job and we didn't have any money or anything and we basically were thrown out to the cold and it was freezing cold and we just picked up our belongings, which weren't very many, and drove in a car that had no insurance, and drove 3,000 miles to California, because we figured this was where Ronnie could start again. <laughs> 